Hello students, welcome back to your computer science class. I am Mrs. Jenny Shah and we are doing a new chapter cyber safety. In this chapter, last class, we spoke about how to, uh, how websites track us and how we can be safe from that. I had told you all to write down the answer about a uh, difference between private browsing and anonymous browsing, as well as the types of private browsing. Today, we move further and we are going to talk about confidentiality of information. Okay, just before I move into it, I will quickly uh, talk about private browsing and anonymous browsing. Now, private browsing is a privacy feature in some web browsers. When operating system in such a, in such, is in such a mode that the browser creates a temporary session that is isolated from the browser's main session and user data. Now, the browsing history is not saved and local data associated with the session such as cookies are cleared when the session is closed these modes are primarily designed to prevent data and history associated with a private particular browsing session from persisting on the device or being discovered by another user of the same device anonymous web browsing refers to the utilization of the World Wide Web that hides a user's personal identifiable information from websites visited. Anonymous web browsing can be achieved via proxy servers, virtual private networks, and anonymity programs such as Tor. These programs work by sending information through a series of routers in order to hide the source and destination of the information. Anonymity tools can also be used to allow users to access the online websites that are blocked in certain locations. However, there is never a guarantee of the anonymity with these servers. These programs are still sus susceptible to traffic analysis. Proxy servers, which have a central point of knowledge, are also susceptible of, to collect data by authority. Moreover, cookies, browser plugins, and other information can be used to uniquely identify a user, even if a user has a hidden IP address. Now, talking about confidentiality of information. Confidentiality of information ensures that only and only authorized users get access to the sensitive and protected data. Internet is a public platform. Everything that we search on it, that we post on it, the sites we visit, everything is visible to the public. But there's some information like a credit card history, bank account details, our pictures that we do not want to make public. You want to keep this information confidential. So confidentiality of information ensures that only authorized users get access to sensitive and protected information. So how can we ensure confidentiality of information? There are eight uh, practices in your textbooks. Number one is to use a firewall wherever possible. Our system that we use must always be secured so that only authentic users can connect to it. Firewall is a very good solution for it. Firewall is a program that monitors all communications and traps all illicit packets, most operating systems now come with a firewall pre-installed. But some operating systems, for example, Windows Firewall, they only block incoming communications. 
leaving open access to the internet from your of your machines thus it is recommended that you install a firewall that can monitor both incoming as well as outgoing communication and trap all the illicit ones so number 1 is firewall number 2 is controlling browser setting to block tracking we already know that websites track us okay so search engines they normally record everything that we search all our queries okay along with our computer identification and they build a profile of our internet usage to minimize our threats we should turn our default browser settings to exclude cookies especially third party cookies since these third party cookies are mainly used to build detailed profiles of our surfing patterns number 3 browse privately whenever possible we've already spoken about this so i'm not going to talk about it in detail fourth be careful while posting on internet very very important i know so many people out there who keep their account private or you know who have the pictures on facebook but they you know they have kept it private or they deleted all their friends it's only them but still their pictures are there on facebook and i tell them that you know once you put up something on social media it stays forever nobody believes me but it's true even if you delete your account you delete all the images you may not be able to see it but do you really think it's deleted don't you think you just have it's only a deny of access it's still there imagine like there is this really huge house okay and there are like different rooms for different things all right uh let's say there is a room uh, full of cards that you go and play cards every day in that room suddenly one day you decide um, no i'm done let's just delete it so you delete the room in your mind basically you throw the key away so that you can't enter that room again but that room is still there and people with keys people with access can still access it you are not able to do it for you it's gone it's deleted it's over even if you want you can't get it back if you know there are times when we delete something accidentally and we still can't get it back even if we want but web is such a place where you put something out there once it always and always stays there so once you post anything anything at all on the public internet you are giving up the right to it you are giving up all sorts of expectation of privacy or confidentiality with it in most countries anything you post to a public space can be saved archived duplicated distributed and published even years later by anyone in the same way as a photograph taken in public space like a city park so always ensure that you never post any of your crucial information or your personal details like mobile number address bank details credit card details etc in a public website next ensure safe sites while entering crucial information now suppose for example you have to enter the information you want to buy an apple phone or you buying an apple app or you know you you are doing some sort of a transaction for payment and you have to you know enter that information then what do you do in that case you should always check that the address contains an http with a lock sign next to it when this website gets loaded whenever you start typing please ensure that the url address starts with https when you type the url of the website in the address bar of the browser on your own do not click on a link that takes you to the website 
always i repeat always always type the url on your own in the address bar you should be very careful when you're handling emails while opening an email make sure that you know who's the sender if you buy if you open an email by an accident make sure to not open attachment in any email especially from unrecognized sources emails containing sensitive information should be deleted immediately also your email can contain a link to a legitimate looking site never click on any link inside an email to open it the link may look legit but it can take you to a fraud website if you need to visit the linked website type the url of the website on your own in the address bar of a web browser but i again repeat never open any link just by clicking on it always type it out that way if there is a redirection you will be able to catch it next do not give sensitive information on a wireless network sometimes you get access to some sort of wireless connection such as a wifi connection which is available in a public space like an airport or a railway station when you are using such wifi connections make sure to not open any personal email or provide any sensitive information on a website The reason for this is that most of the free Wi-Fi networks are not encrypted, and so this information can be tapped in by anybody and can be stolen. Last and final, avoid using public computers. Having said that. at times you may find yourself in such a position that you have to use a public computer for example if you are at the airport and you really need to get a print out of the ticket or something of a hotel reservation or xyz in that case you must number 1 browse privately number 2 never save your login information number 3 never save passwords when you are working on a public computer avoid entering any sorts of sensitive information onto public computer do not leave the computer unattended with sensitive information on the screen disable the feature that stores passwords properly log out before you leave the computer erase history and traces of your work erase all the cookies so today we have learned Yesterday we learned how to avoid website tra tracking us. Today we have learned how we can protect ourselves from different types of threats that are lurking around the corner when we are on the internet. A few other options to keep our identity safe, to keep our information safe, is by building strong passwords, using a multi-factor authentication system. being suspicious of any sort of unsolicited email protecting our mobile devices engaging in safe web browsing practices and most of all staying vigilant so with this children i end this class i hope it has been an informative session for you this is a very important chapter application wise because i'm sure you can apply it very easily in your life you must have at least picked out one to two points that you can apply with this i end today's class children stay home stay safe take care keep learning thank you